I gotta say, if you missed out on our full car predictions, maybe go back, have a look, check them out if you didn't get the chance, but I was most excited for Carl Roberson, Dolce, Lunjabula, and Rick Glenn, and Carl Minus Matt. Unfortunately for me, Rick Glenn out of his fight with Carl Minus, so too is Carl Roberson against Dolce Lunjambula. But fortunate for me and for us and the fight fans at home watching this video, Carl Minus got a short notice opponent in Christos Yagos. And Matt, we're Christos Yagos guys. I mean, as far as the style is concerned, this guy makes really, really good fights. And if you have a look at his overall body of work so far in, I'd say, a young career, but he's 30 years old. He has over 20 pro fights sitting right now at around 25 pro fights. This guy has fought really high level competition and not just in the UFC, there's been two UFC stints and even on the regional scene, some really good names. So we'll rack off some of the names you might be familiar with. Dakota Cochran, he's fought Gilbert Burns. He's fought Jorge De Oliveira, got a win over him in his first UFC tenure. Chris Wade from the PFL or ended up in the PFL and Josh Emmett with West Coast FC. And I remember when we had Josh Emmett on really, really early on in Fight Night Picks. You can check it out. You can look for it. It is there. What was it like getting a call from the UFC when you're fighting, you know, just straight out of California? Oh, it was awesome. You know, it's uh, it was a dream come true. It was kind of what I've been chasing um, my whole MMA career. For me, it was only to fight in the UFC. And uh, if I lost any of my regional fights, I would have, you know, hung it up and called it quits right then. But uh, when I got the call, it was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was just a great day. He got a win over Christos Yagos, ended up in the UFC. For Yagos, he had to kind of bounce around a little bit, fought with RFA, fought with ACB, and then he made it back into the UFC. And in his UFC return, he made it into UFC record books, Matt. How he, so? He did. So unfortunately for Christos Yagos, it won't really be for a positive accomplishment. He is the person who Charles Oliveira submitted to break Hoist Gracie's submission record in the UFC. So he'll always kind of be remembered for that. Probably not the highlight he wants to have on his career. This is a really fun fight, though. And like you had said, you said we're big Christos Yagos guys. Craig, let's just be honest. I love Christos Yagos. He's in that group of, you know, the Matt Browns, all those guys who... Is he going to win every fight you watch? Not at all. But is he going to put on an entertaining, entertaining fight every time you watch? Well, of course he is. And I really do look back to that Jakar Close fight. And it was a fun one because Close, I do think, is oddly the most overrated and underrated fighter in the UFC. Because when he does fight the upper echelon guys, you do see him struggle. But for the most part, when he is fighting just your run of the mill 35 to kind of top 25 lightweights, he puts on a show and he is a phenomenal fighter. That fight was interesting because Yagos was getting the better up close and in the gra or in the striking too, which isn't really where you expected him to have his success. He switches stances really well, does throw a lot of kicks. But I have this weird problem with Christos, and it's that he's almost too good for his own good and where he has this really elevated output. He likes to make the fight really high paced to where he does wear himself out. And the fight against Close, it reminds me a little bit of when Yoel Romero fought Paulo Costa, not really because it was as good of a fight, but you had Paulo Costa doing really good in that first round, doing great for about two minutes of the second round, but the second he started to fade, Close started to put it on him. And that worries me in pretty much every Christos Yagos fight is you have to wonder where his cardio is because if he is able to keep up that crazy high pace that he's able to keep and if he can do that throughout 15 minutes he's a really hard fight for most guys at lightweight especially a young guy like Carlton Minus. and that's when I look at this fight and you think well Christos Yagos coming in on short notice maybe he was in Vegas maybe he was getting ready for this but from the Instagram stories that I've watched from the Instagram posts that I've seen it seems like he's just been one of those guys and I hate to say it because it's an MMA gym in Arizona but he's been fight ready he just seems to have been kind of in that mindset like maybe I'm gonna get a short notice call up I better be ready he made weight he he weighed in successfully 159 pounds for his catch weight at 160. Carlton Minus, uh, sorry, 159.5. Carlton Minus originally scheduled to be coming down from 170 to 155, weighed in at 159. And I mean, you can see that right there on the screen. I always put the, the last weigh in with an asterisk and we already had the Carlton Minus graphic already and done up because of that fight with Rick Glenn. Uh, interesting too, Yago's coming in, weighing in at 906. So right as soon as that bell starts to ring, he came in, Carl Minus at 9.30. Not that I'm worried about either guy. They weighed in under that catchweight limit. Interesting that we have two catchweight fights on this card too with Win and Ahoyo at 195 pounds. This one at 160. But yeah, you talk about a guy in Christos Yagos where do you worry about the gas tank a little bit? Well, maybe you do because the things that he 
does very well. He mixes in his wrestling. He does have good grappling. I know if we talk about his overall body of work and his career, I mean, he has a submission loss to Gilbert Burns. He has a knockout loss to Josh Emmett. He has a submission loss to Charles Oliveira. It's going to happen. Stuff like that's going to happen. We're talking Josh Emmett, who's a top 10 featherweight, top 5 featherweight on his best day. Straight up bricks in his hands. Chris Wade, who, again, is now with the PFL, but Chris Wade's a very formidable opponent, lost that one to decision. And this was early on in Yago's career as well. Gilbert Burns a loss by submission. That's going to happen. And again, do do I put a whole a whole lot of stock into his loss to Poppy's or Popples Martinez uh, back at Tachi PF sixteen? I look at that fight as well. Chris Osiago at the time was six and one, taking on a guy that was twenty six and eight. You have a big discrepancy in skill, and his loss to Jason Gonzalez in twenty twelve uh, in respect the cage. I really don't put a whole lot into it. I look at the last three, the Shamil Nakaya fight, it was a split decision loss to an undefeated fighter in Russia with a Russian promotion. So, you know, you do the math. Even based on his fight skills, that's fine. The loss to Oliveira is fine with me. And then the loss to close again. It was his last fight, so I do worry about it a bit. He was scheduled to take on Alon Patrick back in the spring. Yagos withdrew. But again, I like the way that he looked going into this fight week. Why does that mean anything to me? Well, if it's a guy that has cardio issues or could have cardio issues, I don't see them being as big of an issue into this one because you're already ready. What's a guy doing to get ready for a fight if he's ready to take one on short notice? You're probably doing sprints. You're probably working on your cardio. You're probably trying to go five rounds to make sure that you're ready for a fight like this. Now, we've talked a lot about Christos Yagos. Let's talk a little bit about Carl Minus. And again, I don't expect you to have gone back and watched that Rick Glenn video. So to give you a bit of a refresher, Carl Minus coming into the UFC, taking on Matt Semmelsberger. I had watched so much tapes on that fight. I, I watched so much tape on Carl Minus uh, getting ready in Alaska and Matt Semmelsberger getting ready on the east coast of the States and much more south than Alaska. And in that one... Yes, Carlton Minus, if you have a look at his record, especially his last five, he's three and five. Uh, the loss is to Rick Story, and then his last one against Semmelsberger UFC debut. That Rick Story fight was like, hey, we need a body. Carlton Minus can make it, so let's have him fight Rick Story. Rick Story beat the tar at a poor Carlton Minus. So it's a bad, you know, representation of the fighter that you're going to get coming out of Avalanche uh, wrestling in Anchorage. The Justin Buckles win is good. But Justin Buckles isn't a great fighter. He's more a guy that's known for his coaching. And then the, the last thing is, when you have guys that are coming out of AFC in Alaska, you always have to wonder, what kind of a fighter am I going to get? What was their level of competition? And while Carlton Minus has beaten guys with positive records, they haven't really been the highest level of competition. I wouldn't go as far as saying, you know, scrubs, but you go and watch the fights that Carlton Minus excels in. He throws a lot of volume, he throws a lot of feints, he does move his head well, and he has good forward pressure. His movement on the feet's not bad, but Christos Yagos does something that's very important in this one. He switches stances a lot, and he has some of the best footwork that you're really going to see, and it's something that a lot of people don't get the chance to talk about because it seems like he only fights once in a blue moon. And that's what makes this fight so exciting, because you do have that forward motion, or forward momentum, if you will, of Carlton Minus, and it is going to be interesting if he is able to cut off the cage against Christos Yagos, or is he just going to be following him the whole entire fight? Because if he is not cutting him off, he's going to be chasing him throughout the whole 15 minutes. And Yagos does have sneaky power. He will put a lot into his shots and again it does kind of work to his detriment because if you are throwing such an elevated volume and you are putting a lot behind your shots well you are going to get tired quicker but this fight can kind of really be boiled down to one thing i thought rick glenn was going to beat carlton minus quite comfortably christos yagos is on the caliber of a rick glenn if not even a little bit higher maybe so I, this fight's one of the easier ones to predict i know we do have odds for it now i'll let you get into it but it's an easy pick for Yagos. So this fight, I mean, again, it was announced the day before weigh-ins. Chris Osiagos making it there, weighing in successfully, having no issues. Again, it is a catch weight at 160, but both guys weighed in successfully. Chris Osiagos open at a minus 325. Now, I want to tell you when that line came out. It was 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday. We are late on Monday night. The line's still about the same. It's moved up just ever so slightly by four points for Carlton Minus. So Yagos, minus 325 or so. Uh, Carlton Minus, plus 250. Those are all about the same. If we go over to Tapology, the only spot we're going to find votes. 828 total predictions on this fight. 84% going Yagos, 80% going Decision. Again, it's going to sound like we're just preaching to the choir, but I'm in agreement with the Tapology picks. I'm in agreement with uh, the odds over on um, Best Fight Odds, where we normally check them out. I like Chris Osiagos. I mean, he's got a sneaky left hand. 
when he switches stances, he's the type of fighter that can be busy in both stances, not so much like Wonder Boy that we're going to see in the main event where when he goes southpaw, it's a totally different look from when he's an orthodox fighter. I do lo like uh, how Yagos can really mix everything in. I don't see him going for the wrestling in this fight. Maybe we will. But I think it's going to be his edge and strike that's going to prevail here. Yeah, Carlton Mine is going to have his hands full. Maybe he can come out here really shock the world. But again, the things that he struggled with against Semmelsberger are going to be very, very similar to what he's going to struggle with Yagos. It's just Yagos, I think, is quite a bit better. And I mean, hey, Carlton Mine has looked pretty good at 162. It looks like maybe that'll be the progression of a guy that's fought at middleweight and welterweight for the most part of his career. So can't wait for this fight. Really looking forward to it. Both of us going with Christos Yagos in the short notice replacement bout. And hopefully, Matt, Rick Glenn's okay and we get to see him someday. Matt, now, as far as fight picks are concerned, we're looking forward to the holidays. Okay. We've got question mark kicks coming out tomorrow, so make sure you check that one out. And it just so happened that we were featured on another episode of What Happens Here. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm really looking forward to that. And we get to talk to somebody whose horn we've been tooting for like two years now and i'm sure that gave it away there but it was an awesome conversation so make sure you check that out special thanks to marcus deegan and matt perino for having us on matt looking forward to question mark kicks tomorrow so keep it locked in with fight night picks make sure you check out the rest of the playlist over there with fight night picks matt as we always say let's, let's get, get into it, it.